In this video we are going to use Blender for some 3D projection mapping. Here's how our hardware setup looks like. I'm filming the projection with this camera. I recommend using a computer with at least two monitors. Here's our tiny projector and the projection target will be this white table. An HDMI splitter can be handy for sending the same picture to both the projector and to one of the screens but it's not absolutely necessary if you have enough HDMI outputs in your graphics card. Now let's adjust the projector so that the projection covers the table well. A grid picture can be helpful for adjusting things. I'm also checking the settings of the projector to make sure I have it set to the brightest brightness setting and largest possible resolution. We should also make sure that the lens is properly focused. Now I'm going to launch Blender and drag it to the monitor that I'm also projecting. Let's go to the image editor and create an image which matches the resolution of our projector. Now we can switch to the paint mode and tweak the brush settings slightly. The color should be something bright and I'll use line for the stroke method. I'll just draw an X shape and some outlines so that it's easy to see if the image is full screen later. Then we can enter the full screen mode by hitting Ctrl plus Alt plus Spacebar. It's also important to make the zoom level 1. Now we should use a different color and paint two parallel strokes that follow the perspective of the projection target and then two other strokes that are perpendicular to the first ones. I'll also draw a set of lines in the third direction here just so I have the option to later decide which ones I actually want to use. Finally let's save the image we created. Now it's time to search for FSPY. Let's click on the download link here and choose a version that is suitable for our operating system. Once the download has finished, we can unzip it and launch the program. Drag and drop the image you created on top of FSPY and start aligning the lines in FSPY with the lines you drew in Blender. The lines with the same number should run parallel to each other like this. I'll indicate the correct axis of my lines here so that my scene in FSPY will match with the default axis orientation in Blender. Optionally we can set the principal point to from third vanishing point. If we then define the third axis we can use that to determine the principal point. I have measured that the table is 90 cm long so I can input that information here to further help with the construction. Here we can turn on a grid guide and position it to our desired scene center by dragging from the center point. When ready, go to the file menu and save the project. Next we should download and install the Blender FSPY add-on for easy importing. We will get the scene from FSPY and the original image as the background image. Going to full screen mode should match the projection image with the table. I'll open up a new Blender window so that I can drag it to the second screen. That way I can keep one Blender window full screen while modeling the scene in the other window. Now we can start the modeling process. If we add a plane, it should be easy to match with the table surface. Let's model the rest of the table using extrusions and loop cuts. Let's also model the stack of paper cubes that is on top of the table. After the modeling part is finished, we can start testing different materials, textures and animations.
Playing with virtual light can also create interesting effects. Here's how a freestyle render looks like when projected on top. We can also duplicate parts of the table for some interesting animations. Shape keys are also a good choice when you want to modify the shape of the mesh instead of animating its position. Array modifiers can also produce interesting effects. And the build modifier can also be interesting to try. Holdout materials can be used to mask out parts of the image. Here we are using a holdout to keep the animation of the lower surface from showing on top of the table leg. We can also use animated texts. And here is an example of the wireframe modifier. When ready, we can simply render our animation out as a video file. Here's the final result filmed with a mobile phone camera. We can even move around a little bit, but moving too drastically might break the illusion. Thanks for watching and see you next time on fastertutorials.com.